so it worked the other day. Uh, one of the guys had a brought up that he had an issue he wanted to need to be able to monitor a motor on his home automation uh, system. It's a pump, and I actually have been uh, needing to monitor a sump pump. And so uh, what I did was uh, I mentioned uh, Rogowski coil. And what that is is one of these things. And you can uh, move, you can unsnap up here at the top this so this flexible uh, coil of wire and snap it around a mains lead and uh, of some piece of equipment and then uh, snap it back in and on the outputs here you get a uh, a nice uh, low voltage signal. Well, not all that nice, but uh, these tend to be expensive. I mean, this is eBay and it's 150, probably overpriced. Uh, here's on um, DigiKey, $102 for one of these things. Uh, pricey, pricey, pricey. Um, they're also fairly sophisticated in that it's this uh, specially wound uh, coil of wire, and you can see the uh, main lead coming through the center here and right here. And then these sense leads get wound around the outside and finally return back. And then you have to run it through uh, an amplification stage in order to use the output. Really, if you just need to know that the pump is running, not running, do you really need to go to that much work? Um, there are uh, cheaper options um, like the, uh, oh, what do we have here? Basic uh, current sense transformers. And what that is, those are like seven dollars, right? So not too bad. Uh, like in in here for this one. Now you can come over here and uh, look at another Wikipedia page. Here you can see the um, conductor of your piece of equipment, uh, your power flowing through that, uh, saturating or uh, inducing a, f a magnetic field in the toroid here, and then that then induces an output voltage here that you can monitor. Uh, one of the things to be careful of with these is this, although it's isolated from the mains that you're dealing with, it can be fairly high voltage. Um, in commercial ones, I mean, this could be hundreds of volts. In these uh, smaller ones, they're, you know, in a single 110 volt or 230 volt line uh, with just, you know, 10 amps running through it, that's only going to be probably 30 volts AC, maybe. That's what I've been measuring on some of mine. But you'll want to keep a, uh, always have a uh, load resistor or some type of a load on this um, because this can be quite high. And if you don't have that resistor there to keep a little load on it, you can get arcing apparently inside these coils and damage your, uh, damage your current transformer. And then uh, there are simpler versions or more sophisticated versions like this, which allow you to um, unsnap and you just have to run your uh, line through here. You don't have to uh, cut your light lead. You just have to separate your hot and your neutral, and then you can snap this uh, split core uh, ferrite current transformer uh, across it, and it works real well. So that's, I think, what we're going to do with this. Um, here's the current transformer that I'm going to use. It was uh, five or six dollars, and we're just going to run the mains lead through the center here, and then uh, use this to trigger a circuit. So here's the circuit we're going to follow. Here's our uh, Rogowski or our current transformer, and our power line for our pump, our resistor for maintaining a load. We're going to rectify this. Uh, to DC and then run it through an LED and uh, tap off somewhere as uh, to provide a signal to an input pin on our ESP32. To get the mains uh, split, uh, I happen to have this handy dandy uh, splitter here, which you plug this into the mains and plug the pump into here, and the power is actually from the hot lead is sent down this black wire and then can return on the white wire um, and go out the back to the pump. And what this was was a uh, pump float switch that had gotten jammed in the on position and was running the pump continuously, but I did salvage the cord. And so it's going to come in handy for this. So let's just uh, hook this up here.
There we go. And we're going to monitor the current flowing through it uh, using uh, this meter here. Now, one iffy thing is that I do have uh, now, I will have uh, live mains uh, uninsulated out here on the bench. Generally, you're not going to want to do that sort of thing. You shouldn't be working with uh, split mains connections like this unless you really know what you're doing. Now, we're going to also monitor the uh, a couple of things. We're going to monitor this current using the blue meter here and that'll be in AC amps RMS. Then here we're going to uh, monitor the coil output voltage uh, from the uh, these two little yellow wires here coming off the uh, current transformer. We're going to keep an eye on that and that'll be the voltage under load and then this will be the uh, current going through the LED and we can see what kind of power we're getting. Take a little closer look at uh, the ESP and uh, what we're doing. So here's our ESP32, here's pin 4. We have uh, that hooked up to uh, monitor our uh, load. And if we get a high, then if we get a low, nothing. If we get a high, there's just a little loop running on this for now, and that'll give us the nice blue LED. All right, and here we have the uh, AC, the uh, low voltage signal coming in off of the Rogowski coil to our uh, load resistor of 10K in this case. Here's the uh, pins going out to the meter that's going to monitor that voltage and the AC input side of our rectifier. Then we have the output of our rectifier going uh, off to the uh, ESP32 and into an LED. The LED has a low value resistor of just 100 ohms to provide a little current limiting uh, just in case. And then that's going to return through to the negative pin of the rectifier uh, through another transform, or sorry, another meter that's going to monitor the current uh, flowing through the LED and see what kind of power we're consuming and, and have available to us to use. Hopefully we have everything interesting in frame here. First I will plug the uh, pump into the bypass that we have here. And then I will connect that to the main so that I minimize the amount of uh, exposure to mains. And let's see what we get in the way of an output. All right, well, we've got uh, five amps coming through here and that pump gets noisy when it's running dry. Um, the coil output is only three volts, 3.3 AC. But that's under load, and we have 6.5 milliamps of power through the LED. Also, our uh, sense LED is working, and the LED is on on the ESP32. And we are triggering the ESP32. Uh, however, let's take a closer look at what's going on uh, with that input to the, 30, the ESP32 uh, on our signal there, because that might be interesting. All right, so here we have our scope all hooked up, and we are set to AC coupling at probably need a couple, at least 200 millivolts. Instead of using the pump because it's noisy, I'm going to use this uh, load of 300 something, 150 watt lamps uh, in series. I think these are 120. 20 or 150 watt lamps in series or parallel uh, to provide a load uh, that's stable and doesn't make as much noise. Uh, but it should draw at least three amps, so we'll still see pretty good, uh, pretty good signal. All right, we have our scope hooked up, and we'll check, and we're set to AC input. All right, that will work. Uh, that'll just show us any noise in this signal. Uh, we're not too concerned about the voltage levels at this point because we know we're getting enough voltage to it. So now if I turn on the load, um, we're getting quite a bit of uh, signal here, quite a bit of noise. Uh, well, a whole volt. Now that might mess with the input of the microcontroller because if this was hooked to an interrupt pin, you get a lot of triggers until you manage to get that switched off or disabled temporarily for your routine. You also, um, if you're running this and doing, you know, some sort of a loop and you're doing an if and you're testing the pin, if you, you catch it in the wrong spot, you could get a zero 
or you could get a one, you could miss it, who knows. So this is not going to work very well. But what we can do is uh, very simply add a little bit of capacitance to that. And now she's smoothed right out. Let's increase the uh, signal gain a little bit. And there we go. Um, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, a few, you know, 100 millivolts, that's uh, no big deal in the way of noise. It should be fine. All right, so uh, that's our sig that's that's our uh, presentation on it. The the uh, current transformers are actually uh, very easy to work with. Uh, they're simple. They're pretty cheap, and there are other things you can do. Um, one of the things I might do is to drive this input. I was thinking I'll just put a, a small high intensity LED on the side of the. AC box that this is all going to be in, and then I can have the ESP32 with its battery and everything else in a separate enclosure, and that LED will just shine through into a photo transistor uh, when I put my whole controller together, my monitor. Um, more to come on that, but pretty simple stuff.